think it will. I think it will. All right, everybody. So you want to know how to build the jackass sawhorses? Then I will show you. This pair here is probably three years old and it's basically outside full time. And I think we got at least maybe another two years out of these. I'm using scrap Advantech to make, I think, one pair, and then I'll, I'll cut into a piece of Advantech for the other pair. So essentially, half of it's free. It's a lot easier if you can just trace it. So the first time, go, go buy in the description. Go buy from Ed. He made these things. It's a kindness. And here is Ed's website, jackasssawhorse.com. In my view, these are the best sawhorses that I've ever had. We made our first pair back in, I think it was late 2017. Once you make the one set, you could just make a thousand more sets. They didn't last as long out of edge gold. Who cares? You know, you could reuse the parts, right? I think they'll last the longest out of Advantech, uh, Warehouser Diamond, or LP Legacy. Those are all premium subfloors. Now, here's where I just want to get up on my soapbox, which is on top of a pair of Jackass sawhorses. I mean, you see how much weight that Ed puts on those things. They're fantastic. I can't say enough good. Okay, just pay him for the kit. It's like one and done. Once you have the plans, then just trace it like I did here. Now, typically for me, and part of the reason I say that, Ed is a hardworking framer. He's one of us. Let's support him. Now, if you're a Finnish uh, carpenter, make these out of a set of plywood or zip or something that's a little bit lighter weight. You don't need them to be so stout, but we're putting a lot of weight on them. Okay, factory, that guy. Not exactly sure why I pulled the hammer out. I think I thought I was gonna have to tap the sheet. Anyway, while we're looking at it though, those Badger tool bags, outstanding. The hammer sleeve, can't say enough good things about it. Okay, so I'm gonna take this pattern and I'm gonna use it to mark all of the other patterns. By the way, every set of these that I make are not identical and I couldn't care less. These are a functional piece of equipment. They are not there to look good, especially once they get weathered. And you'll notice most likely that some of my cuts aren't that straight. I, again, I don't care. There's a time and a place. If I really wanted to be Mr. Cool, I would have busted out the tracks off for all of this, just, just so you people could make fun of me. Okay, the, sawho the sawhorses that I'm using, right, to support this, they were built, I think, I think, spring of 2020. So we're coming up on three years. I want to say it was like May or June, something like that. Notice that we have on the one set, we have two ropes. On the other set, we have one rope and we have a bearing plate left over from like mud cell. We had pulled the rope through a set of sawhorses, like, I don't know, is that old edge gold pair? Don't use the bearing plates. It just makes it really heavy. It's not worth it. Where we've modified Ed's design in a couple of ways is that we have two ropes, like the pair there in the foreground. That's number one. Number two, you'll notice that when we built the one set, we really overcut everywhere. It doesn't matter, but you'll notice I don't overcut as I'm cutting out the patterns here. I plunge and I go full depth so that I can essentially come right up to the line with a very slight overcut and the pieces just pop out. Another difference that I will show you here in just a moment is the handle itself that we hang the saw from. Overcut just enough that the pieces come out. You'll notice that that center section hasn't come out quite yet. Well, just wait for it, just wait for it. Notice in the foreground that the, the saw handle or the saw hook, by the way, see how that just popped right out? It slid off, it didn't, it didn't do what I wanted it to do. That's okay. Bam, so there you go. Overcut it, if you wanted to, you could not overcut. You could finish it off with a jigsaw. What's the point? Okay, so back to the handle. Notice the handle in the foreground on both sets of sawhorses. Instead of those coming to a point, notice how we kind of did that, it's, and it's pretty ugly in the foreground, is I'm gonna drill out at that intersection, and then I'm just gonna cut right up to the, the section that's drilled out. That just gives me a rounded edge. Um, I think our very first pair we made, they kind of came to a sharp corner, and sometimes the saw hook would just get bound up there. So we just drill it out, now you can see it. Again, these are not gonna be completely identical, but I'm gonna use that first piece 
to mark the pattern on the rest. Now you'll notice that the piece of Advantech that I'm using, it's all damaged. That's a piece we wouldn't use on the floor, you know, 99 times out of 10, as they say, as the cool kids say. In that sense, it's actually a free piece of Advantech because I would tell the lumber yard, hey, it's all chewed up. And they would tell me, keep it and we'll credit you one sheet. I paid like 15 bucks at Lowe's for the hinges and way too much rope. So, and that's for, that's for one full pair. Ow, come on. I'm getting so weak. I'm just getting weak. How much material do you need to make one complete set of jackass sawhorses? We can get three pieces out of each sheet, and so then we need an additional scrap. And that would give us then four of these cutouts that would make two sawhorses or one pair. <laughs> That's my chalk line. Pretty you young people. All right. And here is another change that we've made. Ease over the edges, router it. This router always has like a quarter inch round over bit because we'll do little work like corbel work or little beam work. And since I review tools for JLC, plug jlconline.com. I have more tools than I could possibly ever use. And so essentially we have a router for each bit. Route them off. I think what it does for us is it lets the material slide around a little easier on top of the sawhorses, but also when we carry them around, there are no sharp edges. Is that a big deal? No, but I do kind of feel like the set that I'm using in the foreground, those rounded edges have kept pieces from chipping off. And, and I think it's worth doing. So if you got a router, do it. At first I was afraid, I was petrified. Oh, that's one of my favorite sounds. That's one of my favorite sounds. So I'm holding it up so the barrel's basically round, but it's down just a little bit. I probably can't see it at all. One of the scrap pieces kind of helps to keep that up. And this isn't the same hinge that Ed used, but it's all I could find at Home Depot. Lows, lows, lows. Always use the biggest drill that you can find for this kind of work. If it's good, if it's good enough for a six inch hole saw, it's good enough for a hinge. So the barrel is just right down here in the intersection where it will not stick up. Phillips. Okay. And grind off the screws that stick out because the last thing you need to do is spend good money on high quality true work clothes, coupon code discount in the description, and then tear them on a bunch of little screws. It's just, that's just kind of dumb. Um, because the first time I tore clothes on it, I realized I should have, anyway. Okay. And then I'm really good at tying knots. If you don't know a knot, tie a lot. That's exactly it. Yep. <laughs> Exactly me. <laughs> See, I mean, that's just like, like James Bond said, never trust somebody in a Windsor. 
Double Windsor. Almost triple Windsor. Okay. Yeah. Okay. There's my 17 inch block. Can I let you in on a secret? I am terrible at tying knots. I don't know any knots, but I can tie my own shoelaces most days of the week. Second, there's no rocket science to the rope placement. We just go two. It's redundant. Redundant. We are aiming for 17 inches of rope in between on the inside. The block, when it stays in place, helps quite a bit. We have sawhorse weight way, way over there on the left. Wait, 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 wait. On the left. I need to tighten that up. That's a little too wide. When, in, when you don't know how to tie a knot, tie a lot. Uh, always the top, yeah, because the shear panels are rated for the outsides. Yeah, yep. And I always wrap the ends with the zip tape. You can see the sawhorse is there on the bottom, same thing. I don't know, does it matter? Probably not, but I think it keeps those ends from fraying. If you test them out, you know, spread them, put them on the nice flat floor. If there's a little bit of rocking and rolling, figure out which one is high and make the rest match. What you can do at the end is you can take your carpenter's pencil, scribe all four, and then cut them, and then it'll be nice and flat. And that's it. Easy. This was very easy. Again, I highly recommend these. They're the best sawhorses I've ever used. So there is the tutorial. And big shout out and thanks to Ed for actually inventing these things and selling the kit. Oh, by the way, this pair was a little bigger than the 17 when I measured it out, so I just tied, you know, I think on each. What am I doing? Just tying one more knot, and then they worked out. Told you, I'm just not good at this kind of stuff. And there they are, beautiful set of sawhorses. This is good rainy day work. Make a bunch of them and then you don't have to worry about it for a few years. Oh yeah, hit that like and subscribe okay. button.